Okay. All right. So uh, what I asked you guys to do for module four is you guys are going to do the instructor case. And I think most we did that in class, actually. So really, all you have to do is upload it. I asked you to do the exam and then 1B. And I said, hold off on 1A because uh, we'll do that today. So I'm going to start by going to module four, uh, module four, SAM project uh, 1A. Maybe I should have hardwired. Okay, so I already downloaded the instructions. I have them here. So we're going to go to the John Miko or your starter file and enable editing. All right, so on one screen you should have me, and hopefully, can you see my mouse moving around? Yes. Um, and on your one screen you should have you, okay? So I guess the first thing we want to do is we want to save it as, uh, I'm going to save it to my desktop. You guys, I guess, know this already. We have to put the two out of there because it's a starter file. So Casey Byron is the owner of Inception Workspace, a collaborative office building where individual startups or small business can reserve workspaces. Casey needs to secure a loan to renovate the office, so he's preparing some charts that represent Inception Workspace's finance to use in his loan application. Casey wants a chart representing the distribution of average hours per week that members utilized his workspace. Switch to the average usage 2024 worksheet, select the range A4 to B243, and create a histogram chart. Okay, so... Uh, let's go to average usage 2024, and we want A4 uh, through B2433. And if you recall, we need to use in statistical charts, uh, we need to use uh, the histogram chart which is the very first one under statistical charts. It says reposition, uh, resize and reposition a chart so the upper left corner is located within cell D4. So remember, I'm just gonna move that up near D4 because for some reason it's way down the bottom. Uh, so I'm gonna make it small so I can move it up. Oof. Can't grab it when it's that small for some reason. Must be a better way to do this when I'm doing. All right, so how do we get it to be anchored? Remember the Alt key anchors it to D4. So D4, and then the alt key is also, they said, K18. And I think we have that done. It says enter. You guys good with that? Yes? K18 and D4. Upper left in D4, bottom right in K18, overlapping that. It wants us to change the chart title to average weekly usage and in hours capitalized. I don't know, uh, it was an ugly chart, but I don't know 
I don't know if Sam's will take off if we jazz it up, so let's not jazz it up. Um, it says to letter C, it says to modify the bin width using a chart by setting the bin width axis options to 10. Uh, so we're going to right click on that axis and go to format axis. And over here, uh, it should say bin width. Right now it's automatic. And I want to change that. It looks like it's automatically selected 9.4, which as you imagine is not a pretty one. So we're going to hit enter. And then it looks like it goes pretty nicely from 15 to 25 to 35 to 45. So that looks a lot better to me. Okay. We good? Okay, that was number one. Let's go to number two. Uh, they offer a variety of membership package to fit the needs and budgets of its customers. Casey wants to graphically represent how those packages impacted their total annual in income between 2019 and 2024. So it says switch to the annual income worksheet, which is where we're at. Insert column spark lines into the range H5, H10. So Remember spark lines, we're going to highlight where we want them to go. So we're going to highlight on the annual income worksheet H5 to H10 uh, based on the data in range B5 to G10. So I'm going to say insert, and it wants column spark lines. So I'm going to go over to spark lines grouping, click on column. And you see the location range because we highlighted it, it's already pre-filled. But the data range, it says, based on the data in B5 to G10. So here's B5, drag out to G10. Oops, I selected the wrong one. Uh, B5 to G10, I selected A5, sorry. And click OK. Puts in our spark lines, which is nice, little graphs inside a table. Uh, it does allow us to fancy these up. It says, then apply the green accent six, darker 25% spark line color. So under, make sure you're highlight on your spark lines. Uh, green accent six, I guess would be. Darker, green accent, six, darker, 25%. So it's this one. That's step two is complete. Everyone good? Step three says apply a solid fill green data bar conditional formatting rule into the range I5 to I10. So I assume we're still on this worksheet. We go to I5 to I10. And remember, data bars are under conditional formatting. And they're called data bars. And it wants the solid fill green. So down here is the solid fill green data bar. Now it doesn't ask us to do this, but so the bars represent uh, the size, and that's probably a, that's probably not a good thing because the total is obviously going to be everything. Um, now let's just leave it alone. So that's step three. Let's look at step four. Casey wants a pie chart representing how each membership package contributed to the Inception Workspace total annual income in 2019. Select the range A5 to B9, and then create a 2D, by 2D pie chart and modify the chart as described below. So A5 to B9, I'm going to go insert, I'm going to click on our pie over here in charts, and we want the 2D pie. Uh, it wants us to move this chart, so it wants it so that it's going to be K1. 
So I'm going to use the Alt key once again. And Q13. Once again, I'm going to use the Alt key. That 13. I think it is. Is it laggy? No? Good. Enter 2019 total annual income by package as a chart title. So 2019 total annual income by package. Apply the style six chart style. So once again, you have to be selected on the chart. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's not a bad one. Of course, I don't like pie charts that don't have percentages by the slices, and this one does not. So, uh, but anyways, that's what what Sam's wants us to do. We're in step five of the case. It says in the 2024 total annual income by package 3D chart, which is just below us, I guess, it wants us to move the chart legend to the bottom. So I'm going to click on that chart. And I'm going to, there's a lot of different ways I can access this, but if I go to the plus and I go to legend and I click on the arrow, you know, right now it's currently on the right. I can select and move it to the bottom. I could have also got there uh, under design, uh, under design, um, add chart element. I could have accessed legend there as well. Okay. Also in this 3D pie chart, add data labels to the chart using the following options. Uh, so let's go to plus. Let's turn on data labels because they want data labels. And within data labels, it wants them on the outside end. So that's outside the chart. And it wants percentage instead of uh, the values. Let's go to more options. I think that's one place we can find that. And you see under label options, right now we have, you guys get there? So under label options, we have value checked, and it really wants percentage. So I'm going to change it to percentage, but it doesn't want the value at all, so I'm going to uncheck that. Probably an easier way to get there uh, would have been, and I think you guys have seen this before, is over in the quick layout, you know, the prescribed, pre-described layouts with percentage and things like that as well. All right. Uh, I guess it also wants one decimal place. I didn't notice that. Um, Let's just, I'm just going to right click on one of those, go to format data labels, and go down to number. Change it to number, the category from general, uh, and do one decimal place. That's not what I want either, though. I guess percentage, I guess, is what I want, not number. I'm sorry. Yes, percentage in one decimal place. <clears throat> I think that's what it wants. So that's done. We're done with six now. Um. It wants us to fix up our line chart here. 
Uh, one thing wrong with this line chart is what? What would you guys say is wrong with this line chart? I mean, obviously it's a line chart showing total annual income, but what's what's the problem with this chart? It the x-axis is one, two, three, four, five. We don't know what one, two, three, four, five is. So when we click on this, we can say select data. This is obviously where the data is, uh, and it wants us to by editing the horizontal category axis labels. So we're going to edit the horizontal category axis labels. And it wants us to use these years, which is B4 to G24. Oh, I'm on the wrong chart. I'm, am I not? Yes, I am. I'm over here. I'm sorry. You guys might have been on the wrong chart. So I'm going to undo. Okay, it looks like I didn't accept it, so that's good. Uh, I was on the wrong chart. i got to click on this chart to make it active. Sorry about that. I'm going to select data. That's right. I'm going to edit the horizontal category axis labels, B4 to G4. Click OK. Click OK. Now we have a year there, which is much more representative of what it should be. It wants us to also modify the minimum bounds of the vertical axis to be 150,000. So once again, probably the best way to interact with that is to right click on the axis, go to format axis. Uh, the minimum right now is auto at zero. I want 150,000. I'm gonna hit enter and it changes it for me. We're on step eight. Well, that was step eight. We're on step nine. Update the line chart by adding primary major horizontal grid lines and primary major vertical grid lines to the chart area. So I'm gonna go under chart elements, the plus on that chart. I'm gonna go to grid lines. And I want primary major horizontal and primary major vertical. So you see it now has the primaries. That is step nine. Uh, it wants us to also Format the line chart as described below. Apply a solid fill using the blue Accent 5 lighter 80% fill color to the chart area. I'm going to right click on the chart. You got to right click on a space where there's no other items. So I kind of selected here because there's no title there or anything like that. Because I want to get to format chart area. I want to go to fill. And what do we want here? Uh, format chart area. I'm going to go to solid fill. Blue. Accent 5, lighter 80%. So it looks like it's the first one under blue. It also wants us to apply to the chart title, Arial font. So I'm just going to select on it, go to my home tab, change the font in the font grouping, to Arial and the font color to blue accent five. <clears throat> what 
which I guess is just the main one because it doesn't have light or darker, just the main one. I'm going to take a moment to save this. It says, Casey created a stack column chart to show how the income generated by each membership package contributed to the total annual income. He now needs to modify the data and formatting used in the chart. Update the package contribution to annual income 2019 to 2024 stack column chart in the range A27 to J44 by removing the total um, data series. So once again, I'm going to select that chart. I'm going to go to design. I'm going to select data. And so we have all the you know open desk, the, the different products KC sells. We want to get rid of um, the total. And it says, do not filter out or hide the data. It wants it to, or us to remove it. So I'm going to select it, the total an X out of it, and that'll remove it. So if I just uncheck it, it won't show it, but it really wants us to remove it. In the stack column chart, format the chart legend as follows as described below. Apply a shape fill using the white back white background one fill color. So I'm going to right click on it, go to format legend, uh, go to the fill and line, and white, I think that's the first one, background one. Wants a border as well, apply a solid line border. So I'm going to click on the little twisty. It's a solid line with blue accent one, which is the first blue, apparently. This one I'm not sure exactly how to do. It says apply a shadow shape effect from the outer section using the offset diagonal bottom right. Uh, this is so I'm not sure where that's at. Is this it? Yes. So in the format legend, in the middle, looks like we have a shadow shape effect. <clears throat> Offset diagonal. Offset diagonal bottom right. This one? Oh, the first one. Thank you. That added a lot. Okay, so that's number 12. We're complete with that. Let's go to number 13. For his loan app, Casey needs to create a chart that displays both the annual income generated by each membership package and Inception's workspace total annual income. Because of the large difference between the package income and the total incomes, Casey determines that a combo chart is most appropriate option. Select the range A4 to G10 and create a custom combination chart. So A4 to G10. And we're going to go up to insert. I'm going to expand all charts. Click on all charts. Go to combo. And we have many series here. 
It wants represent the following data series as a clustered column chart. Open desk visitor, so it's a clustered column. That's very good. Open desk regular already is a clustered column. Dedicated desk, yes. Uh, dedicated office, so that wants that changed to a clustered column. Uh, and meeting room, it wants as a clustered column as well. Represent the total as a line, it already is. And that's the one it wants on the secondary axis. So, so I'm going to check the box for that. I'll click OK. It wants us to move that chart we just created. So I'm going to, as I'm on it, I'm going to say move chart. And it wants to put it into the income overview sheet. And it wants that anchored to A4 and K23. Wants the chart title to be package and total annual income. It wants us to add access titles, so I'm going to check on access titles. And it wants the, the left vertical axis, it wants this to be package income. So I'm going to click on it and type package income. And the right one wants to be total. And it said, finally, delete the horizontal axis title placeholder. So I'm going to click on axis title and then hit the delete key and it's gone. We're on the final step. So number 14 says, let's switch to the loan options workbook. Here's where we're going to use our PMT function. And in cell B12, it wants us to create a formula using the PMT function to calculate the monthly payments to loan option using A. Uh, use the values in cells B8, B10, and B5. And do not enter any values for the optional arguments. Copy the OK. So uh, let's use the PMT function. I'm going to make this bigger so maybe you can see it better. Equal PMT. So the rate, which rate do we want to use? Yes, we have to use the rate per period, which is B8. The number of periods, well, we pay every month for 10 years, so it has to be 10 times 12 or 120. The present value of our loan is $300,000. Doesn't want any of the optional arguments. I hit enter, and it tells me uh, my payment would be 3600 wants us to copy that over. Looks like it already multiplied that by 12 for me. And it says your workbook should look like the several pages. I'm assuming we did everything exactly correct. So we are done. So, moment of truth, you guys can upload that and see how we did.